Okay, we're back. Welcome back to London. I would like to start filming again this year. I hope to start filming again this year. For the last two years, I've been so busy working, hustling. I haven't had a great deal of time to do much else. When they announced here in England we were closing for two weeks, two years ago, I thought that was it, economic disaster. I'm going to be back at my family's house eating beans on toast, not Heinz baked beans on artisan sourdough. Tesco's basics on white bread, whatever white bread the food bank give me, but that's not how it panned out. People went, shh. people were stuck at home and shopping online like crazy. So for the last two years, I've just been running my jewelry business and it wasn't like things just picked up. Everything got harder to do. People became increasingly unreasonable. I could whinge and moan about it for hours on end about how challenging it's been, but I guess I was one of the lucky ones. I got to work seven days a week to survive, whereas a lot of businesses got completely shut and then were allowed to reopen and shut again and reopen and backwards and forwards. And then sadly, a lot of those, I can see walking around central London, haven't survived. There's quite a considerable amount of empty units and stores and shops. I'm surprised how many have survived. Thankfully, a lot of my favorite ones have managed to survive, to survive somehow. But also, not only have I been busy, whenever I did make time to go into central London over the last couple of years to meet friends at bars and restaurants, even just for coffee, it wasn't a pleasant experience, let's put it. It was an ordeal most of the time, especially in the thick of it. We didn't know what the rules were. The businesses were interpreting the rules in different ways. There were different apps and they turned pubs into like Ikea one-way systems. It was, it was hard work doing anything. It wasn't worth sharing. And here's the thing, even if I had have filmed on these platforms, there were certain words that, were tr that became triggering. And I'm sure you've noticed, I didn't have a great deal of time to consume a lot of content, but what I did see was it became very clear very quickly, although there were no rules given to content creators about what you can say and what you can't say, it became very clear very quickly that there were certain things they didn't want you to talk about. And certain words would trigger the platform and your video would be flagged and linked to a government website at best or suppressed. And if you said too much that was off script, you would just be canceled and lots of people were. Also, the words were triggering for the viewers because the rules were different in different countries and people hijacked different things and gave them a political spin. So whatever you did was, people like, if you think of the person with average intelligence, well, they're the average. Half the world's dumber than they are. There's a lot of stupid people out there that start, put caps lock on and start typing before they do any research, but yeah. The rules were different all over the world and that was a challenging thing to navigate and you know people if you weren't wearing a mask outdoors in your video someone in america presumed that that made you a, a trump supporter in which case you were a transphobic racist that supported guns or you know like, like how it went from that to that but it did um so yeah, it was just a nightmare to navigate, so I didn't bother, I just focused on work, the work I needed to do, and two years flew by. But now, I think it's um, time to get back out there. I wanna say we're going, it, life here in London seems to be going back to normal, but going back to normal is not the right phrase because I don't know how much of the old normal there is to go back to, but we do seem to have the illusion of freedom appears to be returning. There are less mask enthusiasts walking down the street by the day. Although the laws were reduced to rules and guidelines and guidelines at the end of last year in most of the country, here in London, the compulsory mask wearing on public transport, our mayor decided that it was too soon and that was continued, it wasn't a law where you could be fined, I don't think. It became a condition of carriage on public transport. But I mean, it 
was coming to light that even our MPs and civil servants who made all the laws and the rules had broken them repeatedly. And But don't worry, they haven't resigned. They've just issued themselves £50 fines and they won't do it again. So we're all right. But yeah, the last thing we had here in London was uh, compulsory mask on public transport. That ended in February, the end of February. And it's April now and at the beginning of this month they ended free testing so now if you want a confirmed dose you've got to pay for it so that's the end of that and yeah just walking about life does seem to be again i don't want to say going back to normal but people are getting on with their lives again now and um it's a lot easier to go about your life now so I want to start filming again as I said and some of my kit was a little bit outdated I was using a Canon G7X before I mean two years in tech terms is generational um, I was using the Canon G7X I think this is a Mark II still a great camera there's a Mark III now that does G7, uh, G7X Mark III which does 4k but I mean you can still use this one for creating YouTube videos but I thought I'd try a phone so I've got a brand new iPhone, which is what you're watching this on, which does 4K. I didn't get the latest one. This is a 12 Pro Max. This was a thousand quid. If I'd have got the latest one, the 13's just come out. The 13 with this spec was 1,350 quid. I didn't want to spend a thousand pounds on a phone, but hey ho. It doesn't even come with a plug. Thousand pound, thousand and fifty quid for a phone, 20 quid for the plug. I think they got me 30 quid for the wireless charger and 50 quid for a case. It adds up. There's no way I was getting the 13. I'm not an Apple fanboy. So anyway, I've got this one. It does 4K video, which I've not done before. So that's what this video is going to be all about. I want to test out the new gear. We'll go to London and see if this works. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, yeah, before I was using an iPhone. I think that's the 7 Plus. So this is a big upgrade. So it's going to be a big learning curve. But before I was using... Mainly the Canon camera, an Apple MacBook Pro for editing, some hard drives, microphone, uh, Yeti microphone, Blue Yeti. And I was using a Manfrotto Pixie Mini to hold this. So I'm gonna try, try and use the iPhone, which does 4K Dolby HDR. And see what that looks like. There's an issue, I know there's an issue with it being less stable, handheld. So I've got, I've ordered a clamp for this which hasn't arrived, a Manfrotto a phone clamp to put on this to hold the phone so I can film handheld. That might still have some stability issues. So I've also got this DJI OM5 gimbal, which I'm hoping will iron out um, iron out stability issues it also does some cool tricks which I need to test out and practice with so all the gear no idea oh I've also got a Manfrotto tripod which this phone is on right now compact full-size tripod but I, I had one before, I very rarely used it. I want to carry as little stuff as possible. The aim before I was walking around with a phone in my pocket, the Canon camera and the tripod, hopefully now I can just walk around with a phone, tripod, if it's not stable enough, the gimbal, this does actually fold up quite small. Also got 27 inch iMac Pro. Not iMac Pro? No, it's not Pro, it's just a 27 inch iMac for editing on the MacBooks, the Pro, because this has got a 5K retina screen, which I'm gonna to need to be able to see the Dolby 4K HDR, because I, that MacBook's so old, it won't do it. So yeah, if you've got uh, one of the latest screens, hopefully you'll be able to, you, YouTube will automatically detect that you've got the, the latest technology and you'll be able to watch this in Dolby HDR. Hopefully. Right, let's head out into London. I want to pr uh, practice filming at night um, and see how this looks in low light because I do a lot of filming at light. 
So let's head out there, I'll film some, some landmarks and we'll come back and see how the footage looks. Let's go. Okay, we're back. Welcome back to London. It's been a couple of years since I've done one of these. Let's see if I can remember how it's done. And this is a new camera. Hi guys. Smash like, is it smash like? And hit subscribe. I think that's it. We'll get there in the end. I'm here to test out a couple of new cameras and some gadgets I've bought for the comeback. Okay, I want to check out some of the features of my new phone, camera phone, and gimbal. <laughs> Selfie stick included. Okay, I can tell that transition is going to take some work. Anyway, we're in one of my favourite parts of town. Chinatown. Chinatown. I've been here for two years. It smells the same.
that's a video for another day. Soon though. There are some shots I would have liked to have got down here at London Bridge of the Shard and Tower Bridge, but I've walked pretty much the length of the river. It's getting pretty late, so I think I'm gonna go and check out the footage I've filmed already. And then save Tower Bridge and the Shard for another evening. I think there's some panoramic shots I can do with the the phone and the gimbal, which should look pretty good. Well, they look pretty good in my mind. How they'll come out on camera is a different story. Okay, for those of you wondering what Borough Market looks like at night without the market, like a car park. Fancy one, but a car park. Okay, it's a few days later and I've had an opportunity to airdrop the test footage I filmed on this Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max. I've airdropped the test footage from here to my new 27 inch iMac. I've had a look at it and started editing it. More about that in a moment. The new iMac is capable of processing the footage. I was filming in full tilt on the phone. So 4K, 60 frames per second in Dolby HDR. Now my old MacBook, I don't wanna say it wouldn't be able to cope with that, but it wouldn't be able to cope with that, I don't think. You'd have just got the little rainbow wheel of death, um, of doom, trying to cope with that. The file size of these are massive. It's a, it's a lot for any computer to process. I think the Final Cut Pro file is over 200 gigabytes. If I, were, I checked if I was to export that, that file now, uh, Apple ProRes 422, I think the export file, the movie file, the .move file is over 100 gigabytes. So it's a lot. The screen's blacking out when it's got a lot to process. When I'm doing, like when it's, when there's a lot going on, when it's importing, rendering a lot of that 4K footage, and I'm editing it at the same time, for some reason the screen's just blacking out, which is both 
concerning and annoying. So it might be brand new, but I'm gonna upgrade it already. Again, being tight, I didn't fully spec out the Mac. Memory from Apple, it's overpriced. So I'm editing some of the new 4K footage and although this Mac is considerably more powerful than my last one, it seems to be taking about as long to process the footage. And that's probably because, although it is more powerful, it only has about the same amount as, of RAM as my old MacBook, eight gig. So I'm gonna upgrade that a long way. I'm gonna make this 128 gigabyte iMac. We just got a RAM, this RAM, in that Mac. Luckily, this is a relatively straightforward process on these iMacs. There's a hatch on the back, so I've taken the old eight gig of RAM out, two four gigs, and put in these four, is it 32s? Anyway, total now should be 128 gigabytes of RAM. So, the old eight gig of Apple RAM is out and the new 128 gig is in let's check about this mac i turned i pushed the power button and it was just a black screen nothing happened no noise nothing i thought i'd broken it scary moment anyway after a few minutes the i guess it was initializing the ram after a few minutes the startup noise began and the start process began and now we have an imac with 128 gigabytes installed Boom. Okay, I've had a chance now to look at the test footage and edit the test footage that I filmed on this, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and some of it using the DJI OM5 gimbal. Looks phenomenal, some of it. Better than I expected. Some of it, unusable like the shots when I'm spinning 360 in Soho and I thought I'd try out the, each different lens in low light but I just wanted to see what it looks like so I left it in there in case anyone's wondering some of it was usable some of it completely unusable but that's more me testing it out than the floor with the with the with the camera but yeah the I mean five years ago when I bought my last iPhone it was probably about five years ago the 7 plus and again been tight, I went to the Apple store, I didn't buy the latest one, I think it was probably the 8 or the XR at the time. I got the good deal on the old one, the 7 Plus. I was already, I was starting off on, on the now out of date model, but I was hoping then that I would be able to use the phone instead of the cameras, the compact cameras. And it was good enough to create, and still is, like my iPhone 7, I didn't need to upgrade. It still works. Um, it's just the cameras then were not as good as the compact cameras. You could create a high definition watchable video. You could still you still could, but the quality just wasn't it wasn't quite as good as these compacts. These were just a huge step up. And part of that was because with these it was the flip up screens. So if you want to film yourself, you flip up the screen, you can see and frame yourself. Um, that way, or flip the screen down and you can frame and film whatever you want to point the, uh, point the camera at. Amazing quality um, either way. With the phones, to do that, you're flipping from their main good cameras, good camera, to the front facing one, which is always a huge step down in quality. But I think now with this 12 Pro Max, and we've now got the 13, it's probably even better. Uh, with this, this, the front facing camera on this, I think, even in low light, looks pretty much as good as this G7X Mark II. The front facing camera on this is phenomenal, not the front face, the main camera, phenomenal. Um, I mean, the tech spec, 4K, 60 frames per second, Dolby HDR. When I bought the last phone and this, that would have been the, the technical spec of a Hollywood blockbuster movie. There was no chance of a YouTuber doing that. The, 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 the kit, the crew, and the budget put that out of most people's, the possibility of most most people. But yeah, five years ago, these were a significant jump up in quality from 
the phone. I think now if you get a camera geek, a cinematography geek, they're gonna be able to tell the difference between this and a, you know, a full spec DSLR camera or, or proper cinematography camera that can, that, of, the, of the same tech spec. But for making YouTube videos, I think this is gonna be more than good enough. I mean, I'm gonna upload this in 4K, 60 frames per second, Dolby HDR. And the only way you can watch it in that good of quality is if you've got one of these 4K, 5K, this is a 5K retina screen that can do Dolby HDR, but YouTube will detect it. And only then will it actually allow you to um, select one, or select HDR. And even then, if you've got it, if you've got YouTube set on auto, it's going to downgrade it depending on your internet connection. Probably you're probably not going to be watching back videos at 4K that are filmed in 4K um, HDR. It's going to downgrade it to, so that it doesn't buffer. So unless you've got the latest screen, the latest internet connection, what this is filming in is just beyond what my, a lot of people can watch it back in. But yeah, so yeah, pleasantly surprised um, with the quality of that. Looks great on the big screen. It's gonna look great on phones. I've already filmed another couple of videos already. So I think I've got, I'm up to about three. And like I was saying earlier, hopefully this year we can get back to filming. We Going back to normal is not the phrase I wanna use. We seem to just be going from one crisis to the next right now. We've gone from the last one to war and the got energy and fuel that's been that's you know been blamed on anything other than the governments and central banks and the financial crisis i mean apparently them printing money during the last two years creating money creating currency over the last two years with was you know with modern monetary theory it was going to be no problem whatsoever but you know like, like every time that that's been done in history as soon as you get combine that with the velocity of money which we couldn't have over the last two years because the supply chains were just in pieces as soon as you combine i mean technically creating currency is inflation the increase in the monetary supply is inflation it's not rising prices it causes rising prices but they they're not going to admit to that ever and when you combine the inflation with the velocity, the increase in velocity of money, you get hyperinflation. So we've got that to look forward to. Food's my main concern. That, that, that's a whole nother video, food security. But fingers crossed we don't all starve. That's something to look forward to. So yeah, as long as we don't get another crisis, <laughs> another crisis as bad as the last, we can carry on filming. So, I hope you enjoyed this little look at um, some of London's landmarks. There's at least two more videos to come because I've already filmed them and hopefully many more. So, thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this at least, you know, I don't know entertaining, useful, whatever. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Toodles. I remember this time. Toodles.